How's it going ladies and gentlemen, my name is Ruffle Rowlett and welcome back to a brand new video guys. Now, before we get into today's content and today's rumors, leaks, whatever you want to call them, here is the comment of the day on the screen. A big thank you for leaving this one mate, I appreciate it, thank you. And also, here is the new question of the day, which is, what is, in your opinion, the best legendary Pokemon from the first three generations? So, not all of them, but just from the first three, what is the best one? Let me know in the comment section down below and yeah, let's get into the actual content. So first things first, we've got a few rumors and things to talk about. I thought we'd cover all this in a singular video rather than doing multiple videos on it, but we got this thing, then we got two more posts to talk about. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a beverage, and let's get started. So first things first, this was posted by somebody called Keno Glove on the r slash Pokeleaks Reddit, where he basically points out the new direction and beyond. Now in Pokemon Legends Arceus, takes approximately 200 years before the events of Diamond and Pearl. Meiji inspired Japan. The professor's name is Agaki or Akagi, sorry, pretty much a, a direct no notion to Cyrus, a person who's obsessed with technology and the future. He's the man behind the mechanical looking Pokeballs. His dream is creating an ideal world between Pokemon and humans. Some Pokemon have different type picks compared to the original Sinnoh ones, not alternative forms nor regional forms. There will be boss battles as seen from the screenshots. They will have an aura buff. Think totems. You cannot catch legendaries, uh, fair enough. Lake trios will play some big part and be seen flying around in villages, giving you buffs. Eternatus also plays a big part in this game and looks a lot different, kind of like an actual dragon. Distortion World returns, as you may have seen from these screenshots. Uh, I'm not sure which one he's referring to here. Now that what's after PLA, you may ask. It's not Generation 9, actually, according to him, it's sequel to Pokemon Sword and Shield. Obviously not the names. Now, not a direct sequel and is set years after the events of Sword and Shield, Hop is indeed the professor. New legendaries that will replace Zacian and Zamazenta. Gal Galar region is massively expand and expansive along with some new landscape based off of Wales. The full uh, Pokedex is uh, returning, hearing a holiday 2022 release next year is big. So, let's start with the first thing here. Now, this being the setting like 200 years before Diamond and Pearl actually does seem to make sense. Meiji inspired Japan uh, does fit in with some of the theories I've heard of what this time frame is going to be for these games, uh, what they might be based on from real world history. The professor's name is Akagi, um, which uh, pretty much is a, no a notion to Cyrus, fair enough, a person who's obsessed with technology in the future. Now, that does seem to kind of like be him here playing with the idea that the character would then be like someone who might, you know, have some connection with Cyrus, possibly even some time travel weird wormhole thing, you know, is the feeling I'm getting here, but who knows. And him being the one man who created the Pokeballs that we see in the, you know, in the actual game, which would make sense as well, and he's gonna also be the one who's gonna send us out to start creating, you know, uh, the Pokedex, right? So who knows? Now his dream is creating the ideal world between Pokemon and humans. Now some Pokemon have different typings compared to the original Sinnoh. Not alternative forms, nor regional forms. So apparently they're just gonna have some other, like, typings to them, but they're not gonna be alternative forms or regional forms, which then makes me wonder, well, if they're neither of those two things, then what actually are they, right? Like, what is their actual, you know, purpose? Like, what are they in reality then, if not those two options? Like, what, 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 what possibly could they be, right? Well, I don't know. They don't really answer the question here, do they? Now, we continue on, though. You cannot catch the legendaries, or rather, there will be a boss battles, as seen from the screenshot, they will have an aura buff, think totems, so yeah, boss battles, we already know that from the screenshot leaks that we have seen, as for like what they might serve in terms of their purpose, them having some sort of aura buff, that would be an interesting concept. You cannot catch legendaries, now I'm gonna be honest, I think this might be the case, I don't think we will be able to catch legendaries in these games, I, I honestly don't think we will be. Who knows, but I have this odd suspicion that we may actually not be able to do that. Lake Trios will play some big part, flying around the villages, now I wouldn't be surprised if the Lake Trio actually do fly around, uh, maybe not the villages, but just in different places, and you can kind of like see them roaming around, flying in the sky or something, would actually make sense. And giving you buffs, Eternatus will play a big part, now apparently Eternatus, a lot of people have speculated that Eternatus does have something to do with the big cloud, that we see above like uh, Mount Cornet all the time and even before like these games were announced there was suspicion about that being a connected thing that Eternatus has something to do with that which actually wouldn't be that surprising we know basically nothing about Eternatus it's just one of this strange Pokemon that we don't know anything about it's kind of a honestly kind of dumb Pokemon um, like there's not really a massive explanation for what the deal is with it so it would be nice to actually get some genuine info on it like to be fair with you, like some information that actually makes it all make sense. But that's more or less that rumor. I would love to know your opinions and thoughts on that one. And uh, let's continue on to the next one. Now, somebody on 4chan posted this old like uh, rumor, which uh, 
weirdly enough, may actually have some value to it. Now, again, we don't really know exactly, but, you know, let, let's just look into it and see what it has to say in terms of information. So here is the rumor itself. I'm going to put myself over here, so I'm not blocking it for you if you want to pause and watch it or read it yourself. So, I sa he says this. Real Leaks. Hello, everyone. Leaker here. I know some stuff about the next Pokemon games, which will be the fourth generation remakes, which are still in a very early development phase, but present some, uh, present some very good stuff. Now, this was posted back in 2019, by the way, ladies and gentlemen, on the 16th of the 11th, right? So this was basically, if we go back all the way to, like, to 2019, so that was what? In uh, November of uh, 2019, let me see. November of 2019 on the 16th, which was a Saturday. So this was posted on a Saturday, 2019, uh, on the uh, 16th of November. And this was a long time ago. This was like right around the time when, uh, what, like Sword and Shield was releasing, right? So this is around that time frame. but let's continue. Now, you know something about them, they're going to be Gen 4 remakes, which are still in very early development, which at that point in time, these games probably were very early in development, if this is a real leak. Um, he continues on, but here's what he has to say. So, where can we start from? First of all, the backlash of this last summer about the decks, lack of animation, and bad technical uh, comparement has influenced Nintendo and the Pokemon company a lot, to the point of getting a senior second developer on board with Game Freak. I cannot reveal more details about it, as the nature of my identity could be compromised by this, but I can tell you that they're uh, taking things seriously this time, and they're doing all kinds of work that needs to be done uh, to ensure that these games meet the quality of hardware on the console they're using. In fact, the technical uh, compartment has been improved a lot and we have seen very nice things that will bring joy for old-time fans fully open world explorable world that map of Sinnoh has been resized to come in agreement with this but we still have the cities and important places that made Sinnoh unique just reshaped to have the possibility of a larger map and not as large as Breath of the Wild but something more than half of it so he says there's an open world now the problem is he talks about the cities but we've kind of already been seen that there may not be cities already in the Sinnoh region right like this is Sinnoh of old and we don't know if there's gonna even be big cities, we've seen a village, and that's like a village, city, whatever you wanna call it, a town more or less, but we don't know if there's gonna be actually large cities and if this is gonna be like set in what time, but that's the first part of the rumor, you can think it's on. So that was the first part. He says that many quests and secondary activities which will give you rewards, also dungeons that will let you fight very good stats Pokemon if you're very lucky and also find rare stuff, which actually would make sense with a game like this, which like what Legends Arceus looks to be. No more limited paths, you can take whatever direction of exploration you want in a specific area you've unlocked in the game. Makes sense. Then he says, gyms retake the concept from Gen 4 but is also reshaped in a new way. They'll bring all the new together. Which, again, I don't know if this makes sense, but again, remember, this was in 2019, and back then, let me be honest with you, they may have planned to actually make a normal Diamond and Pearl remake, but then that shifted, and they decided to make, you know, Pokemon Legends Arceus, and then Diamond and Pearl remakes were kind of separate and given to another company, so they could try this new concept and ID. This actually is a possibility, and this could be, uh, like, connected to that. So, Jim's retake, da da da. National decks will also come back with all the Pokemon animations redone correctly, which are also future proofed, and you'll probably see after these games too. Now, based on what we've seen from PLA, PLA so far, they're finally using all the animations they've already made from a long time ago, they're finally utilizing them. The game still uses the regional decks for the main story, but in the post game, you can access the national one. So, this probably won't be the case for these games. Dynamax and Gigantamax are both coming back, which starters getting their special form, while the Legendary Trio has a different system that will make them different. Don't know if this is true, though. Uh, now, battle graphics and appearance has been changed, which uh, is a lot more similar to what battles look like in Pokemon Battle Revolution instead of Sword and Shield, with models perfectly scaled and battle background aligned in real time with the game instead of pre-assigned images. But that is actually true. This is going to be real-time battles, so that is actually technically true. Uh, Pokemon in the open world will interact with each other in base of typing and evolution. They're building a system to behave Pokemon in base of different situations. And that is true. Uh, the Pokemon do seem to have some form of like actually like they interact with the environment differently and they seem to actually have a genuine kind of thing going on with them, which in this case, yeah, it, it does seem to make sense, right? Like it, it actually makes sense. Um, I don't know, it does seem to make sense. So I, I don't know really what to say about it, but it seems to like make sense though. Now, however, the bigger issue here uh, that I'm kind of running into is if this is real, right? Then a lot of things here don't actually like you know make a lot of sense. They don't really make a lot of sense at all because this is a Sinnoh of the past, which means we won't be seeing stuff like probably gym leaders or Elite Four. Maybe we will, but most likely we won't, right? Because those probably don't exist just yet in the world. That's what I'm assuming. 
Then on top of that also, some of the other stuff he mentions, like Dynamax, Gigantamax, I don't think those are returning these games at all. I think Dynamax, Gigantamax is left behind in like Sword and Shield, and that's where it's going to remain forever, and that they're not going to bring it back beyond that, and that's the final stopping ground for specifically that feature. But again, everything is possible, you never really know with this sort of stuff, so I'd love to know your thoughts and opinions on this subject in particular, lads, because I don't really know what to say about it. I, I mean, well, I just have to wait and see. And then the final thing we have to cover here is coming to us also from 4chan in this case, and I thought we'd just quickly read what this guy had to say. Basically, he just says, no, you aren't getting a serious news on Legends Arceus until BDSP releases. Putting out Legends news would just be overshadowing BDSP since their release dates are so close, it would risk people skipping the remakes and just waiting for Legends if they thought it looked, looked better. Now, I want to just point out, this guy is probably correct here uh the the logic is sound right if they are doing promotion for bdsp uh alongside legends arceus that would cause legends arceus to overshadow bdsp because let's be fair legends arceus looks more interesting in all honesty uh it just looks cooler right because it is a an open world pokemon game that just brings a lot much more like important thing to it and to be fair the casual audience, as pointed out somebody down here, majority of consumers are casual players who don't really hear about these games outside of trailers and official promotions. And guess what? That's the only way that they can promote these games to that casual audience, which is the biggest market, whereas the rest of us, like you and me, who are watching this video, for example, you will be looking at everything about these games and about both games, right, and planning to probably buy both games. Whereas a casual fan uh, will only really see what the trailers, the promotions on the walls and stuff like that. And if they start doing Legends Arceus and BDSP at the same time, it's gonna like overshadow BDSP by a mile, I'm pretty sure. So I think what they probably, I argue, I would argue it's true here. They might wanna do BDSP first, and then as soon as that is over, as soon as it's released, just start the PLA promotion right away. But at the same time, it's all really weird because the release frame is so short. It's so short. It is literally like, what, two months later and you have another game, right? Like November, you've got the game coming out, what, on the 19th? And then literally in January, at the end of January, so that's like basically two and a half months later, maybe even less than that, later, you have the other game releasing. It's just a very short time frame, so I don't know what they're thinking, but I guess we're going to have to wait and see. So yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that's going to be the end of the video though, guys. Here's the second comment for today, the second comment to be featured. Thanks so much for leaving the, you know, the, the comment and also answering the question. And then, and then also, the final thing for today, ladies and gentlemen, the question of the day, which we already mentioned earlier, what is the best legendary Pokemon from the first three generations? Let me know. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Rolf Rales. I'll see you all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye.